Ain't the last leech still sucking my nightmare and yours, the watermelon? This ain't the same kind of corpulent blood guzzler you use for bait, though. This parasite slurps away at the very ground we stand on. Unlike its just as evil twin, the sawmill, this piece of work is allowed to keep working, which makes its work that much worse. I just hope this thing stops spinning before the world does. And if I'm around to see it, all the better. springs here are an esteemed natural resource, first utilized by the ancestors of the Shoshone further back than the books go. Mountain men exploring the area came back with tall tales of bubbling mud and steaming rivers, leading to high ridicule from their despondent comrades. It seems nature's gems were dismissed as pure delirium, but further expeditions and explorations elucidated the matter better than words ever could. The stories were real, and the beautiful, bubbling geysers were our park's very own wonder. The history of our hot springs as a hot property goes back to 1906, and one Grégoire Lacroix, a French-Canadian immigrant who staked a mining claim on the banks of this here park. What he found himself in was a spot of hot water, and much like that Archimedes fella, soon thunk a something crafty. Riverbank hot tubs were the first place his mind went, and soon folk from all over were following along. Decades later, mud ain't the only thing heating up. Turns out Mother Nature's bounty ain't half easy to make a few pennies off. But hey, what can you do? They treat me nicer than any other parasites I got, and they never forget my birthday, which is more than I can say for my tapeworm. Here you see the tracks of my tears. One more of man's attempts to siphon away nature's bounty at a heavy cost. This railway here carried a precious cargo out of the park to be refined and sold for coin. However, it got shut down when the powers that be did the right thing for once. After the mining industry was ixnayed here at the park, we had no more need for a choo-choo or two. Now they're gone to join the rest of the metal they hauled out of here. This here is what folks call ghost town. Although a few hundred years ago, you'd have known it as Prosperity Spring, the mining hub of Wyoming. Lovely name, but there's nothing nice about chipping away at nature's beauty for some pretty rock. Maybe hard to picture now, but the powers that be didn't always see the value in protecting a place like Golden Ridge. Instead, getting carried along in the gold rush that washed the reserve down the drain. It's hard to say how much damage the toxic metal and acid runoff did to the park. 
I'm relieved to say that those that could put their foot down before the Elks, Bears, and whatever Johnson was around got ran out of house and home. Now the town rots where it stands and the gold stays where it should. Open canyons you could park a plane in means you're far out in Ruby River Range. While you're there, drop by the outpost. Much like any other outpost, you'll be able to find notice boards, storage lockers, a boathouse, and a garage for easy access to transportation. Later, American trappers rendered the French name in English as Golden Ridge Reserve. I quite like the old moniker, but hey, the new one's not too shabby. This dam here was built in the 1950s. And out of all the taxes the land has to pay, it's one of the better ones. This structure allows proper irrigation of the surrounding farmland. And while I wouldn't say it's as grand as some of the other sites in the park, it's a monument of sorts. Unfortunately, that monument releases greenhouse gases, deprives ecosystems of nutrients, destroys habitats, raises sea levels, wastes water, but... Ah, hey. Best of a bad bunch. Around these parts, you can see scars in the land, left behind by the bandits of Prosperity Spring. This one here is a shaft stabbed deep in the soil by some suckers, scrabbling to make two cents to rub together, thinking they can go home to their families with a smile and a, a pocket full of silver looted from the land. Well, I can hardly blame them. Any poor soul would stay poor after being sold that sham. You see, people don't make money. They just move it around. And although no end of it was getting moved out of Golden Ridge, it's the ones that already had the money that came out rich. There ain't any silver or gold in this hole no more. And there sure as hell ain't no dreams. Only ghosts now. And this pit is a grave. Here lies the American dream. Lived on the back of the land and those too poor to know any better. Rest in peace. If you find the trees giving way to unyielding mountain rock, you're an Emerald Lake Plateau. While you're there, do be sure to drop by the outpost. Much like any other outpost in the park, you'll be able to find notice boards, storage lockers, a boathouse, and a garage.
Heck of a view, ain't it? Don't matter where you are, can hardly miss it. What you're seeing here is what I saw every weekend growing up. It's what my pop and my pop-pop saw working away. It's what the Nez Pierce, Blackfoot, and Shoshone saw as they lived and breathed and loved under that same big sky. It's hard not to feel connected when you feel nothing but awe at the majesty of Mother Nature. Where you're standing, so many have stood before you. And these mountains have stood here longer still. They're older than the oldest of man's tales and will outlive every last one of us. popular one for the tourists is Spires Drop, our largest and most powerful waterfall. Around August time, it's not too rare a sight to see a double rainbow leaping across the rapids. So keep your eyes, people. I could wax lyrical about how beautiful and majestic a sight it is all day. But above all else, Spires Drop is cathartic. If you ever feel like you're mad at the world or even a little sad, Sometimes it's just nice to see some water getting a snot beat out of it. The kid never stays down for long. They say this park is haunted. And well, the only baloney I care to deal with is in a sandwich, if you know what I'm saying. However, if we're talking about the ghosts the logging industry left behind, I'd have to agree. There's the ghosts of men and women who lob down sweet mother nature's vital vitality for a, a toot or two. There's the ghosts of fir, juniper, and pine, took from us far, far too soon. Heck, the building itself is once burned with its own baleful life and energy. And look at it now. Just an eerie shell where work once was. Although I'll have to ask you to stay out of there for safety reasons. Should probably remove this bit from the tape later on if I figure out how. Studded right in the center of towering alpine peaks is our Silver Strand Meadows outpost, offering shelter to travelers from the mountain trail. Much like any other outpost, you'll be able to find notice boards, storage lockers, a boathouse, and a garage for easy access to transportation, as well as a flagpole for yourself. 